Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to go through the control of the heart rate by what's known as the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now you tend to really only study this at uh, A2 level. So this video is aimed really for sixth formers and studying the module of nerves and nervous control. So the first thing to note is that changes to the heart rate are controlled by what's called the medulla oblongata. and It's located within the brain. So you see in this picture we've got the brain at the top. We're just going to highlight the region of the medulla oblongata. And that region that we're referring to is just around here. So this region is known as the... Well, I'll just put medulla for the moment. Medulla oblongata and the brain. So ultimately the changes to the heart rate are controlled by this portion here. Now there are two centres within the medulla. And you'll notice the yellow, uh, pic or the yellow portion of this image represents a small uh, relay neuron to that particular uh, region of the medulla. So what we're talking about are these regions just here and here. So you've got two centres. There is one centre that increases the heart rate and it's linked to what's called the sinoatrial node by the sympathetic nervous system. So we've got the centre that increases heart rate, and that's this one here, just at the bottom. So we'll just label that as the centre that increases the heart rate. And we said that was linked to the sinoatrial node. So you've got uh, just a diagram at the bottom of the heart. And this region here, this is where I drew draw this blue circle, that refers to the sinoatrial node. It's often written in shorthand as S-A-N. Now, really, that's within the wall, quite quite close to the septum of the right atrium. It's not particularly clear on this diagram, but essentially we've got a connection from the centre that increases heart rate to the sinoatrial node, and it's via the sympathetic nervous system. And that's highlighted just by here, by these sympathetic, and it's called cardiac nerves here. We've also got a centre that decreases heart rate, so clearly that's going to be this one here. We'll just label that in. So you've got a centre that decreases the heart rate. And that's linked to the sinoatrial node. So again, down at the bottom, via the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's highlighted here. It's got the vagus nerve. We're going to be uh, specific about the actual key nerve that carries those impulses but ultimately we're talking about this word here this parasympathetic nervous system now which of these centers get stimulated depends upon the information that they receive from two types of receptor now these receptors respond to chemical changes in the blood and pressure changes in the blood so all of this control of horror ultimately depends on which of these two receptors are stimulated. Now the chemical changes in the blood are detected by what's called chemoreceptors and the pressure changes in the blood are picked up by pressure receptors but they're also called baroreceptors so we'll just make a note of that because that's key before we move on. So we've got two types of receptor. We've got the ones that detect chemical changes in the blood. They are the chemo receptors and the ones that detect and respond to pressure changes in the blood and they are the pressure receptors. Now what we're going to do is talk through ultimately how the heart rate is controlled in relation to these two types of receptor. So to start with, we're going to look at control by chemoreceptors. 
So we're going to look at number one, the control by these chemo receptors. Now, chemo receptors are found in the wall of the carotid arteries, and they're the ones that deliver blood to the brain, but also in the aorta. And these chemo receptors are particularly sensitive to changes in pH of the blood as a result of changing carbon dioxide concentrations. So we're just going to label these chemo receptors. So they're found in the wall of the carotid. So if I just label this big vessel here coming from the heart, this is the aorta, the biggest artery in the body. And you can see there's three branches coming from the aorta. These two here, these two small branches, are the right and left carotid arteries. This third one here is the subclavian. So these are the carotids. If I'll just highlight these in green. So we've got, and I'll just draw an, uh, a sort of asterisk here. So we've got within the carotid, oh sorry, the aorta, and also within the carotids. So this green asterisk represent where these chemo, let's put one a reminder by the word chemo receptors on the right hand side, where these chemo receptors are found. Now, what I intend to do to explain the control by chemo receptors is use the same uh, sort of task sheet that I give my own students. So I give them sort of the, the starting point for the, almost like a flow chart of the story of what happens when we're controlling the heart rate by these chemo receptors, and then I ask them to fill in kind of the most the gaps with the most appropriate words. So I'm going to do the same in this video. So what I've got here ultimately is the same information that I give to my own students. So here we have a flow chart representing the control of the heart rate by these chemo receptors. So we're just going to talk through these and I'm going to fill in the gaps with what ultimately would be the most appropriate answer. So if there were to be an increase in muscular or metabolic activity, that's our starting point. And remember, I said these chemoreceptors are sensitive to changes in pH of the blood as a result of changing CO2 concentrations. So if there's an, let's say, increase in muscular or metabolic activity, then the CO2 level would increase. So the CO2 rises ultimately and that would be due to an increase in and it says blank by the cells and that blank would be respiration because as we know that respiration levels increase when there's an increase in metabolic activity and CO2 is a product of uh, respiration so if the level of CO2 rises because CO2 is slightly acidic the blood pH therefore decreases. So I'm just going to put an arrow for down here because I can fit that in easier than the word decreases. So the blood pH falls as the CO2 increases. So if we look at the next step, the chemical receptors or these chemo receptors, as I've been referring to, in the carotid arteries something frequency of impulses to the mandula or blungata and that would be increase. So I'm going to put an arrow here just to represent increase here. So you get more signals going to the medulla oblongata from these chemoreceptors. So if I were to draw in, we'll do it in green, these chemoreceptors in the carotid, I can almost put, I'll do this as a line like this. So what I'm essentially doing is representing, and I'll put a little star there, I'm representing that stage there by that green line. Chemical receptors in the carotid arteries increase the frequency of impulses to the medulla oblongata. Now the centre in the medulla oblongata that, and this would be increase, I'll explain why in a moment, increases the heart rate, would increase the frequency of impulses to the sinoatrial node via the, and if we go back to the beginning I said that the centre in the medulla that increases heart rate uh, ultimately is coordinated via the sympathetic nerves. So that would be the sympathetic nervous system there. So I'll just write that in, 
So sensor number of logon further increases heart rate, increases the frequency of impulses to the sinoatrial node or the SCN via the sympathetic nervous system, nervous tissue within the spinal cord. And we'll just forget where it says label E, that depends on a particular other sheet that I give my own students. So the sinoatrial node therefore would increase the heart rate and the heart therefore would beat faster. That's the job of the sinoatrial node. If it's going to increase the heart rate, then the heart needs to beat faster. But if the heart is beating faster, we need to consider now our breathing. The breathing must increase. Because when we increase our breathing, we're getting rid of excess CO2. We're expiring it faster. We're exhaling that little bit more. So the reason we're trying to ultimately exhale more CO2 is so that our blood pH will return to normal. So ultimately, we've had this increase in muscular activity. Our CO2 level has risen because of respiration. Now, what we need to do is get that almost uh, to fall back down again because our blood pH has dropped. So we're going to detect it through the chemi chemical receptors in the carotids. We're going to get a greater frequency of impulses to the medulla that ultimately is going to cause our sinoatrial node to increase the heart rate. By doing so, and by increasing our breathing, what we're going to do is get rid of the excess CO2 and we're going to turn our blood pH to normal. And this, that increase in heart rate is going to allow us to deliver a greater level of oxygen to our respiring cells. And just to finish, so we've got the bit at the bottom here, so these chemical receptors in the carotid arteries then reduce the frequency of impulses to the medulla oblongata, which would ultimately cause the blank to slow the heart rate back down to normal. So that blank must be SAN because that is the thing that is ultimately controlling the heart rate here. So there you've got a little bit about how we control the heart rate by these chemoreceptors, these chemical receptors found both in the aorta and in the walls of the carotid arteries that stem from the aorta. So what we're going to do now to finish is just look at number two, ultimately, these pressure receptors. Because we can control the heart rate via these pressure receptors that detect the, these pressure changes within the blood. Now, pressure receptors occur, again, within the walls of the carotid arteries and the aorta. So where the green asterisks are still, still applies there. So you also find these pressure receptors where you find these chemo receptors. So in the same way, what I'm going to do is uh, just bring up the same kind of tashi that I give my students and we'll work through those two. So we'll look at when the blood pressure is higher than normal, when the blood pressure is a bit lower than normal. Okay, so what we're going to do is shrink the screen just to make this a little bit more visible here. We'll move this up to the top here. And let's bring in you can see very similar to the information about chemo receptors. Just going to put that there. And we're now going to talk about these pressure receptors. So let's consider control of the heart rate via these pressure receptors. So when the blood pressure is higher than normal, it's the first thing. So when the blood pressure is higher. The pressure receptors transmit a nervous impulse to the centre in the medulla oblongata that something the heart rate. So clearly if our blood pressure is higher, we want to bring that bit down. So pressure receptors transmit a nervous impulse to the centre in the medulla oblongata that would reduce heart rate. And that would be the logical thing to do. The middle arbogata sends impulses via the something nervous system to the sinoatrial node. So if we're going to want to slow this down, we're ultimately going to want to have our parasympathetic kick in. So this would be the para. I'm not going to be able to fit the whole word in, but I'll put para for parasympathetic nervous system to the sinoatrial node. So ultimately that will cause the heart rate to decrease. And if our heart rate decreases, the blood pressure would then fall. So that's how we get control via these pressure receptors or baroreceptors. Conversely, when the blood pressure is lower than normal, what we want to do is raise the blood pressure. So the heart rate ultimately will need to increase. So if we look again, 
at the, uh, the gap fill. Pressure receptors transmit a nervous impulse to the centre of the medulla oblongata that, and this one therefore would need to be increases the heart rate. So the medulla oblongata sends impulses via the, and this would be therefore be sympathetic. I might just put simp, but that means sympathetic nervous system to the sinoatrial node, and as a result, the heart rate would therefore increase. And that's important because if our blood pressure went low than normal, we need our heart rate to get back to normal. So there we have just a little bit of information about how we control our heart rate via these chemoreceptors and via these pressure receptors that are found within the carotid and the aorta. And it's all to do with signaling to these two centres in the medulla oblongata, the centre that will ultimately decrease heart rate and the centre that will ultimately increase the heart rate via these two things here, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, hope all that helps.